Um, and overall, I like both of these teams' lineups. I would still favor Vici Gaming just a tad bit because of their past performances, nothing more. Okay. But I believe when you look, just look at the drafts, both of these teams have a chance to win it, to take it. It's I, I don't see a clear advantage for either one of these teams. Just the fact that there is a morphling on one side. But um, also very interested at in seeing how well this invoker is going to fare as it's a hero we haven't really Prepare seen uh, picked way too many times. I believe yesterday we saw one invoker only. Yes, uh, it was a miracle invoker. Uh, which ended up being kind of a four protect one strategy from Liquid with the backfired. Whereas this lineup of Vici, you could end up doing someone similar. We do see Embers go towards those drums, build, ramp up in the mid game to make space for someone else. But at the same time, see. you do have a full back plan. You can farm up on that Ember. You can look towards the late game with him. It's just, of course, in most recent patches, they buffed his threat, his danger, his like volatility it. even in uh, the mid game. The this thing that I see that. also from forward oh, gaming is that their supports are able to rotate a little bit better than Vici Gaming's. You're playing with um, Treant Protector and Lina. There's a lot of mm -hmm. potential, like kill potential with those two heroes. You have the setup, let's say X marks the spot on mid lane into Lina using her Light Strike Array that can always lead to a kill on Invoker. On the other hand, Ancient Apparition and Keeper of the Light are really not the heroes that you want to have rotating around the map and, and pressuring anything else but their own lanes. Um, however, Aghanims has been added back to Kotl, right? So I really want to see these position 4 Kotls more often again. GH, I just want to see his Keeper of the Light again. Fade is definitely a good Kotl player too, so excited to see what he can do with it and if he's go going to even go for that um, build. Kind of funny, right? For a while, we had Agnum as a must on Cottle players. Then that got ch uh, sorry, not Agnum's. Agnum's into Refresher and then back into Agnum's. Mm -hmm. So it's just no matter what you do, no matter what you change, it always just seems to be, be this nice. one clear item that he needs to go for. Mm -hmm. We're going to see Ember and Invoker fighting over mid lane. No, they're not fighting. They're just trying to decide which one of them two <laughs> is going to actually go there and. Yeah, flashback she pub games there for a second, uh, right? Everyone is. When you see that, you know you, you feel a little bit of hatred towards that last player that went to your mid and tried to snatch it. But Ember is going to go bottom lane. Just, uh, it looks like they will try lane 4 now. It's... Oh, Mars is an easy hero to overwhelm the start like this. I don't think you want to be trialing again. As you can see, Keeper of the Light is porting top. No, but you don't have to stay here. If you just burn through Mars regen and then you can back away, it's not like you'll be able to contest Morphling at that stage. I Definitely Mars is, is one of those more greedy type of offlaners, and he's not exactly the tankiest Evo. Two armor. I was I was looking at the, the bottom lane when we were talking about Mars, and yeah, I agree with you. On this top lane, you want to be uh, able to just zone out Mars as, as much as possible. And they can stay here as a tri lane and just completely dominate it. I believe it's not that bad for them. Um, at the same time, they didn't want to stay bottom as a tri lane. Yes. On the side of Vichy Gaming. As Kotl and AA plus, plus uh, Ember, they don't do any more than just the AA and Ember. Right? So it's it's kind of useless. Don't switch your arm into dual lanes though. MSS moves bottom as Snaking has suffered quite a lot. At the same time, they've already made Mars just level 1 on that top lane so they can move away from the top. Mm -hmm. They can still harass him. Bai does a lot of damage. 91 base damage on this train protector. 91 base damage hitting you. If you're that Kotl, if you get hit like twice, you're just feeling it so hard. And they already play sent look where the sentries have been played. So if the lane stays around this area, then it's Pilot Eyes playing ground. So yeah, you the be problem. Careful. Oh the bot, DY, he's gonna go down, first blood draw. And the Cold Feet comes out too late. And, uh, nice light strike array dodge there with a fire fist. You have to be careful as an ancient. You're playing versus Lina and Pango. There's a lot of damage coming from them, and if you're caught out of position, you're most certainly dead. AA is also one very slow hero and very squishy on the start. You know, on the mid lane, things are more or less even. There's oh. a haste, but he's been scouted out. Yeah, he shouldn't be able to do much. It's a level 2 AA and CCNC is already salved up. Well, he does break that salve, so it's a small victory for him. Yeah, he did get most of the healing off before that occurred, though. 
I, I believe the Keeper of the Light has to be super careful on the top lane too. As he's playing versus Triant and Morphling, if Triant uh, gets on top of him, Leech sits him, roots him, and Morphling also waveforms, he can die easily, but there's no waveform just yet on the Morphling. No, you have need that level 3. They're too far away from the trees. And the other thing is, with zero armor, even with Stout Shield, Triant doesn't feel as tanky as you'd expect. And his, like his tankiness is because he's, he hits you harder than you hit him, so you yes. need to run back. That That's where his tankiness comes from. Oh, so, so it's the glass cannon logic, right? I don't need to build tankiness, I can just do more damage and everyone's dead. I mean, he still has 800 HP, right? So he's not... Yeah, but he's feeling the pain right now. Look at him. By trying to move away, and he's dead. Yeah, because Morphling had to go back. One of the reasons why he died there is because Yavar opted to go for creeps instead of him. And... Like, it, it's all about how you work as a duo on this uh, lane right now. And you could see that when Pylai Dive was ready to go for the Kotl, Morphling wasn't. And when Pylai Dive was being attacked, Morphling wasn't there to help him out. So it's... Well, could be played a little bit better there by the two of them. It's kind of interesting to see that Pi has a variety of branches either. That's something we have seen out of uh, prominent train players. Zayats is one of the big ones that comes to mind. Just so you can move across these lane areas. Those, and have those, those branches are definitely necessary. Perhaps he is going to pick them up a little bit later. Pi just trying to be frustrating, but it's really hard to get on top of Mars now that he has two points in the spear. Bot lane, block the striker A's, bluff, MSS, gonna be forced away here. Just a little bit of harassment back and forth. The cold feet does a proc on the snake king, but they can't get Lina hit so hard. Now that he has boots as well, as he's been a part of that first blood on ancient apparition, it's so easy for him to just hit and run, hit and run, just go back and continuously just poke and prod at you. It's very hard to deal with this Lina when she's played like this. And you can and now, see AA. Yeah, this is one of the big reasons people don't like to pick AA. Is it's slow, doesn't have much damage to output in a lane. Definitely not a hero that you want to have on that off lane. And that you're basically building the games now, Liz. It's been that way for a while. When they introduced Spirit Vessel, AA became something you can buy from the shop. Mm. Prince? I believe. Yeah, they picked up one. Four to get the other three. Mm. I'm surprised they didn't uh, send the Keeper of the Light on that dual off lane and then uh, AA on the safe lane. I, I, oh, AA again. There you go. Here. The cold feet, but the damage might already be done. Snake King will freeze up. Flame Guard is active. Light Strike Array. Dodged by the Slight of Fist. Snake King should be ran down. He can't survive this. I probably needs to be careful, though, because he's taking a lot of damage. Yeah, sticks. Yeah, MSS, he couldn't get the Light Striker out in time. Also, every time they're fighting, you have to keep in mind that they are very careful because of Invoker. Cop. Sounds like top light. Mm -hmm. Going in, waveform through. They get the kill on the fade. This time it worked out. That's the Kotl. Once they have that waveform, they got it to level 4. Once they have it, it's so easy to take down the Kotl if he's around. Speaking of levels, Paparazzi should now start to ramp up his aggression a bit because he went... The problem with this lane, the way they had to start it, is by level 3, he'd gone 1-1-1. One, one, one. There wasn't really any sort of threat. Although there'll be a frown to him. Try and move away. That's the Kieran Kane's. So Shbuckle is there. guess is wrong from Snaking. Mm. Very interesting that he used it towards it. Yeah, Kane instead of away. Not, exactly, instead of away. Thanks be to you. Paparazzi. And, oh, a convenient rune. That's convenient rune and a convenient salve from the A as well. The y, the y he has been feeding on this lane, but again, he has helped out Paparazzi a lot. And even when when he died the last time, Paparazzi got a kill on Snaking, which is definitely more, more worth it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a good core though. He brings items out. Soon chains are there. Life Strike Ray needs to be used. Uh, it's not sidestep. Sun Strike is coming in. MSS low should be going down. Snake Kick. Snake King should be able to back away from this. But now they've got the Searing Chains. He hangs around a bit too long. He's got the Swashbuckle. Get out of range. But that cost him a lot of health. And Paparazzi almost dies there. Meanwhile, Mars in top lane. He gets ran down as CCNC does rotate. Didn't use the bow either. The problem that they have with these two supports on Witcher Gaming is the fact that they're just not strong in the lanes versus these heroes. And the Ancient Apparition on the off lane is really weak, but he's not any stronger on the safe lane when you consider that he has to be laning versus 3 and Protector. So they're making the best out of a very bad situation on the side of Witcher Gaming. But you, you can flame them and you can say, why aren't they playing Kotl on the off lane with the, with the Ember? It makes so much more sense. But Searing Chains, they set up Cold Feet, and also if A was top, he would be feeding even harder than the Keeper of the Light. 
No, it's true. It's, it's very hard for you to get the kill. Yeah, you got the cold feet, spear, combo, but at least this way around, you can get guaranteed blast. MSS, what can we Going in, cold feet. And MSS is dead. Snake King just poking in product. DY, DY will just retreat. Snake King has to get away from the flame guard. Aparazzi does have six now, so Ember should be incredibly hard to kill. Pylite dies rotating across. DY will try and just retreat back to the fountain. And Pyle help him get there quicker. There it is, gets the kill. Cold Feet was thrown out, so Pyle just moved to the side. This is one of the better games that I've seen for Tree and Protector. And it's interesting that they opted to go for these supports when they saw that Tree and Protector being picked up so early on in the first phase. Both the Kotl, but yeah, it, there are reasons why they went for them. Because A is decent versus Morphling, he definitely fits their lineup well. And Keeper of the Light is just that strong support that they did go for very early on, so they didn't have an option there. This is the thing when you draft a Kotl, you're kind of submitting to the fact that you're not going to really have this four that is going to rush a Spirit Vessel, right? Yeah, so okay. this was a consolation prize. A Ford that's going to rush a spirit vessel, a Ford that's going to be that tanky beast in front like a tusk, like an earth spirit, you know, you don't have that option. But then again, you have a hero that scales really well and can itemize. And also a hero that's always going to be able to have a lot of networks just because of the nature of the Keeper of the Light, defending all the time, using that Illuminate. But that lack of bulk up is a, bulk, a big part of why AA will be so important for Vici, because they don't really have much in the way of front line. Mars is it. No one else can really afford to be the front. Flame Guard will absorb some damage, but Ember's not really known for his great stat game. That's so true. This Mars just has to be a beast in the front lines. I believe he's going to itemize that way too. But like oh. right? Speaking of the AA, BY's been found again. The Cold Feet's going to come out. The wrong Thunder has been committed. Paparazzi moon across on MSS. Sunstrike is off the mark though. Now they'll look to retreat. But Pylite Die is here. DY is dead as MSS does get in with the Dragon Slay. And Yua says, this is my lane now. Yeah, that's his lane, but the bounty runes are what's important at the moment. And I believe we're going to see a fight here as Mars has rotated in as well. Staking has gone top. There's the arena. They do pin Pi against the wall. He has the overgrowth to work with. The light strike already cover him. For his ultimate look to move away. Barely, but still alive. The sun strike. Turns out Trian's a little bit too slow. The remnant. Isn't that slow though? Paparazzi will move across the river. Pi, Light Strike Ray gets sidestepped. Mars in the meantime goes down to Yuar. Pi is still off and alive. The X will drag Paparazzi back. He doesn't even get the kill to Trian. No! He'll rip it out and he gets him! He burns past him. Yuar will tap to strike. Not enough damage there. Turns into the Ember Spirit. Now the Cold Feet should freeze on to him. Just about sidesteps. The Light Strike Ray is out. An Ancient Apparition. He's just a constant casualty of war. Yeah, so forward gaming definitely come out on top when it comes to this bounty room fight. Pi, Light I also did manage to steal one of the bounty rooms just under need embers uh, hands also if pilot die went for that hit there on the ember spirit to root him i think they would have got him yeah but he was hesitant it's i'm not certain if they would have gotten him but he didn't have anything to lose as he was dying yes. either way he opted to just hide in the trees that's yeah, not the best way to play but yeah it, it it was a hard decision to make overall he did snatch that rune and he played everything else very well he baited out that arena of blood too and yeah, overall Invoker is going for two Null Talismans into drums it seems, so Ori is looking to be very active after the laning stage. No Midases, no rushing Aghanims, nothing like that. This is a new build for me to be honest, I mean, not super new, but very rarely seen at the moment. Well, this is Vici admitting they have no Fallout Prime, right? Because if the mid game doesn't go well for them now, who does what? Because this Ember's building into Yules, he's not going for some sort of farm build. This isn't your Midas and Vocal that we see so often. They have to pop off hard in like the next 10 minutes or Ford should just start to cruise through. That, that's, de game. that's definitely a good point. I didn't even notice. I, I, I thought that the Emperor is going to build drums and mails from something like that, but instead he's going for Yules to help him versus the Silences, versus the Kunkai X marks the spot, versus the Roots. But as you just stated, who is going to pop off for them? Who is going to be that force in the mid game? I guess Yank has to be the one. It's not just a matter, he can be, he has to be 100%. Ignis commit, we'll catch onto a second one, but they can move away with the swashbuckles. They've only connected one target so far, the wrong Thunder. Comes up with Bangalore. Just a little bit bumping and grinding up against the wall. Yeah, just uses that ulti so he can get out. Not the perfect way that you want to use that ulti, but in that situation it's better than dying. Yeah, you can't risk it as well, because Arena of Blood was off cooldown again. Exactly. You know Mars will definitely kill you if you get into that wall. Things calm down for a moment after that. 
active aggression. CC and C is the biggest benefactor of all this farm time. Top of the CS, top of the net worth as well. And he has enough of the drums. Yeah, he hasn't died, has two kills to his name too. 93 CS, doing really well. 2000 gold, can finish off those drums if he wanted to. Instead, they're going to smoke up, it seems, instantly. This is a move for that top tier one. As you can see, they have a ward uh, under the tower, behind it. So they have the vision necessary, they can approach it. Uh, Keeper of the Light and Vichy Gaming, they're feeling safe because uh, there are no trees, so treants cannot approach them. But, yeah, that's a mistake, as Kuka is here. Yep, doesn't even want to have to use the boat. I just want to try and run through the Light Strike Ray, they'll be able to do exactly that. And the other thing is, look at this ward that, that Cole put down. This is why he felt safe towards the Radiance Tier 1 tower on the left side. This is an unorthodox spot, but that's because they've been so good on the sentry so far on forward. Like it, that lulls you into a false sense of security. But that wasn't the case at all. Now there should be a push for the tower. You can see that Yavar also does not feel very secure. He has no false sense of security on this bottom lane as he sees these two monsters attacking his tier 1. Yeah, he knows what's coming. Especially when Paparazzi has that arcane ring. It just ran out. Yavar could try and force them off the tower. Especially with Pilot Die coming down who has the overgrowth available. And they're teeping an MSS to the tier 2 as well. There is an Ancient nearby, and he has his ulti Ooh. ready, and the will... They know about the sentry. Pai just sidestepped the spear there. A lot of damage being done. They're gonna throw the Ice Blast through. They're gonna get the nuke, but they do Radiance clip on the Pilot die, and now the Hay snaking. Look at the move in here. Team Chains doesn't connect on him. He decides to just farm instead. Ember's not an easy catch. And they managed to get them away from their, their tier 1 which allows Morphling to farm here even further. When you're playing Tree and Protector, you want to be defending your, your towers whenever possible and bringing in forces to defend it. Like, uh, you do not want to let them chip on your tower or, or destroy it. As you have that Tree and you can heal it up. That's one of the reasons why they are so good at uh, and adamant at defending and bringing in both Alina and the Pango towards this bottom tier one, a tower that's usually not uh, not considered to be the most important one for Radiant. You'll lose it around the 10 to 13 minute mark. But no, not in this game. The towers are looking relatively healthy and Pi does have the maxed out living armor now. So he should be able to heal them all up to full. Of course, Tarina is one of those tricky ones. It's one of those heroes that when you draft it, it gives you that boon of keeping all that, that gold out of the hands of your opponent in terms of, of tower kills. But... If you take one big bad fight, suddenly there's just so much gold on the map for your opponent. You see, around his shrine. Yeah, and he has a bow already coming in on Yang Yang. Ooh, looks size step the Alkyu Sunstrike. Actually, it just pushed CCNC away from the Sunstrike, and now he can turn around. Yang needs to retreat, but he can't. The Royal Thunder is activated, and Snake King will control him up. They'll get the rest of them out, but that was their move to make. DY died so fast on the side as well. That, that's possibly the hardest kill for them to make on the side of forward gaming. The tankiest hero, 1880 HP on the side of CCNC. He has drums, bracer. Even when the, that AA uh, hits, you have to kill him and stun him before he uses the boat, or you aren't getting him for sure. Even with the soundtrack, if it's connected, if the boat is on CCNC, you probably aren't killing him. And this just kind of seems like. I might die. I die. might die. Yeah, that's an interesting move. He knew they had a sentry down here from earlier when Mars tried to pin him. Well, maybe, maybe what he was thinking when Mars was trying to pin him to the wall is that Mars is just uh, trying to use the spear blindly and hoping that he's going to hit him. Because if he hit, hits him, he gets uh, true sight on him. That's, that's true, but even then, like, the, the spear is here, right? Like, you gamble that there's someone behind the tower in this area. That's the surprising part. And I was going to say that Vici, the reason they made that previous move towards the Shrine seems to probably be that they're in a rush, because we mentioned why. They have invested heavily into this mid-game. They realize if they don't get some sort of advantage at this point in the game, Ford will just start to spiral out of control. It's very problematic that you invest so much in the mid-game when you are playing versus a 3 Protector, because man, does that hero do well against these lineups that just want that, this full aggression early on. Just healing up those objective, objectives, healing up those towers, preventing you from taking control of the map. Because as long as this tier 1 is standing here, it's much harder for Vichy Gaming to invade the jungle, to invade this forest of the Radiant side and uh, board it up. And it's not like you have someone such as the Nature's Prophet or the Rape King, that, or even a Lycan, that provides an army to get through those instances of healing that Living Armor gives. Mm -hmm. That slows you down even more. You know, you look at the heroes on the side of Vichy, who really hits towers here. Invoker is probably their best bet. 
Ember not really known for his tower pushing capabilities. And Mars, he just wants to kill people. Yeah, we have a smoke coming from forward. Yeah, they want to kill people. That. They want to kill people, but there's three Dyer's heroes on the mid lane. This isn't really... Attack. And even if they go on paparazzi... Oh. It's very hard to get him. He they, just smoked. They're looking to make the move now. Yeah, he seems he's on the high ground, though. <laughs> but we've seen this before. Their problem is they're smoking up again for this tier one objective on the bottom lane. She can see. Shadow plays up. Paparazzi didn't even have to dodge the LSA off the mark. Now they've been moving the arena. They're going to pile down. The Ingram's going to come out. And now AA, he's left behind. So a one for one trade. Bigger investment out of Vici considering they did use the arena. And now the X is down to Paparazzi. He does have the Yules to work with. They'll just toy with him a little bit. And it looks like Pangolier's on his way in. Cold Snap is there though. And the Ingram's as well. Pangolier can't get away dead. For 35 seconds. It looked like it looked like Forward Gaming had that fight because they wasted Arena of Blood and a Zulti on Pilai Die. But afterwards, uh, Forward Gaming they just fell back and they lost their Pango. They didn't protect him there. And at the same time, you do have Yavar just farming on the mid lane. Yeah. For a bow in his face, the town's still gonna fall. There's too many heroes here. CCNC needs to retreat, in fact. Zero dust. Where the, there, the dust is on top of the Chains as well. They're actually gonna pin him to the tree. The meatball will hit him. The Sunstrike does not, but that won't stop them from killing off the Kunkka for 50 seconds. Finally, finally, 19 minutes in, they take down the bottom tier one, a tower, as I stated before, that's supposed to fall in every strategical plan around 10 to 13 minutes if you really want it that bad as they did. Well, they brought everyone, so I imagine, yes, Liz, they definitely won. And they badly. smoked up for that. But then again, they took down the tier one. They also got a couple of good pickoffs, like a couple of good heroes. They killed Snaking, they killed CCNC on his Kunkka. And now they can rotate in deeper inside of this map and start pressuring them more. The problem is, Yavar has been farming that whole yes. damn time. It's been 4v5. That is the thing I was going to hit on here, is that Yavar will soon be ready to join in on these fights, and then you're in trouble. He has that Manta now. He has it in 100 gold. He's going to farm one creep camp and have it. We mentioned how important the Ice Blast is, and with no one looking to build a Spirit Vessel on the side of Vici Gaming, you're completely at the mercy of A hitting a good Mars. ultimate. And Mars, he tried to hit a good ultimate just to escape, and he won't even get that out of it. Yeah, I'm not certain what he was doing there, farming a little bit way too deep. Uh, sometimes you can justify it. Hi, Razi. Come the overgrowth, because Yuar's here. We said about getting him involved in the fights. He's going to wait for him forward. Fate tries to retreat. The Leech Seed is slowing him down too much. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, they're going to strike and find a kill into Paparazzi. Yuar realizes if he goes in the cottle form, he moves quicker. He has the waveform, so Fade should be dead. Nice sidestep, though. Nice. The Ice Blast is coming in as well. Sun Strike as well. Ignis down. Won't drag him close enough. Yuar was already aware of what was on its way. Well, that sidestep and... What a great play by Fade overall. As that Keeper of the Light manages to survive. It did just cost him his Will-O-Wisp, though, which is a big investment. And one of the reasons he managed to survive is his amazing movement speed. But, as you said, he lost the Will-O-Wisp. They also saw the AA ulti has been committed. They go instantly to the... <laughs> and DD! And the DD, yeah, DD was... I was expecting Kotl to try and deny it, but instead he saved himself, but he cannot save them from losing Roshan. He can't, and that means you are not only having the power boost of the map to be incomplete, now has Negus to boot. This is just a perfect game, game for Yavar so far. 2-0-3, has Manta, hasn't been contested whatsoever in his farming patterns. He's very ready to fight at the moment. And he's moving towards that BKB too. It's going to help him versus the Invoker versus the Ember. Once he does have that BKB, like, how do you take him down? Where is your damage? Where is your physical damage coming from on the side of Ichi Gaming? You have none. BKBs are pretty much game over if Forward Gaming use them properly. And you can see that CCNC is building into it. Same goes for the Morphling. Gavar is, well, opting to go for no, he e -blade. the E-Blade. Well, <laughs> I, I think both of these items are good for him. Uh, with yeah, that it's a matter of which way around you want to get. Because you're not wrong. If you do get that BKB rush, there's nothing that Vici can do to you. At the same time, if you get the E blade, if you if you get the E blade, you can jump on top of almost any one on the side of Vici Gaming and blow them up instantly. Yes. Total AA Invoker just fall to you, but you're putting yourself in danger. And the fact is, he does have that Aegis to work with. Is this Aegis going to buy? buy um, <laughs> hate him into making, a, into making a bad decision. That's the thing, though. Because it just might. I'm not saying that E-Blade is a truly bad decision, but it might hit him back if an AA hits properly, if a Sunstrike hits. 
You can die in these fights. And this Aegis, you know, the worst case scenario for Ford, it buys them time to farm. But that E-Blade is a decent amount off, so it's not like you're gonna have enough time. It's not like you've almost done the E-Blade and then you can use the Aegis to farm a BKB. Mm. Maybe if you find some big fat kills, if you manage to actually pick off Ori, who is sitting second in net worth in the entire game, that would be perfect. Bottom lane, they're trying to catch Ember, but these two teams are playing so well around their wards, and it's very difficult for Pilai Dai to move in and drop him. Yawar turned into Mars, the X came out from quicker in time, Yang will be dragged back, see if he's on top of him as well. And they're on both sides, so he couldn't even look to make some sort of key play. You can't split push versus uh, CCNC's Kunka, that's the problem. It's very difficult. Only paparazzi can get away with that. Yeah. I, I believe we saw the same thing happen when they were playing versus Liquid. Oh, snaking. Use his watch buckle. Hey, or he's going to reveal off. himself. Hey, oh, it's going to fly through. EMP off the mark. Snake is going to be fine, but no. Instead, DY is going to die in the bot lane. The wrong fun is going to be committed. Snaking moving forward towards Ori, but no, he turns too soon. Yawar gets his adaptive strike out, but it looks like the focus is a bit too far to put down the ice wall to make sure Yawar isn't. Yeah, I was looking at that A ulti and why is it flying away? Is he drunk? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, he just died. That was the he problem. Just died. There. That was the problem. He was caught by Lena. I like heard a kill for a second. I was like, was this a next level? No, it's nah, just, it's just it, an AA die. It's happened to me so many times too. Like you're so focused at that AA ulti, you're like, I'm getting him, I'm getting him, and what? By the time you you get <laughs> fired that ulti, someone has picked you off already. As you're just a fridge, you're ancient apparition. It's so easy to kill that hero. Even though he did itemize in two bracers, I love how many teams are going for this build right now with with their supports. If things go. South, like if, if you aren't having the best game, just buy a couple of bracers. Tank yourself up. That's all you need. Maybe if he gets four, he'll live long enough to release his ultimate. Yeah. Keeper of the Light has that Agonims, by the way, completed. Sitting on a healthy 7.5k network just below his position 3 Mars. Meanwhile, at MSS, he has the Aether Lens and he's getting very close to having that Yules completed as well. I believe Keeper of the Light does a little bit more with the... But it, it's mm, it's more the pick off potential, has that right? age is here, but... Yeah, that's not the optimal target. Well, they start to add GR for the strength now. The Sun Strike's gonna come in. They'll get him pretty low. They might be to pop him now. Snaking. Uh oh, he gets it wrong with the wrong thunder. He's gonna drive back the X now. The Ignis is gonna be committed, but it's too late. Colt is gone for 50 seconds. CCNC with the BKB active chasing in. You are still alive. Refuse to give over the Aegis. He's feeling greedy about it. They can't pin him to the wall. CCNC tries to drag back Mars, but no. Blinks away. They do get killed to DY, but we expect that by now. A is always dying. Paparazzi. He's stuck here. Puts up the Searin chains. Yours as well, but the light strike rate. No, they got the X. They're gonna drag him back. He's got another remnant now. He'll be able to look to escape. Here. They already used the Yule, so they can't actually do anything about it. Bango. Bango. There's no more remnants available. They actually just reclaimed the Aegis. They got the kill onto the Morphling in the end. That seemed to be more his choice to go down, as he was sick of having no health. <laughs> Paparazzi will get out alive, but my oh my, you were hoping for a lot more with your big fat Aghanims than giving over two kills and only getting the Aegis. It's interesting, uh, when they went on that Morphling, they opted not to go for the A ulti there. They were saving it for his second life. But they should have known that they have no damage to take him down even once if they don't use the A ulti. And because of that, they just lost that fight so convincingly. Yavar, in the end, he does fall, but as you said, it, it's, it must have been a mistake or his choice. They are making mistakes. We're going to drag him back now with the X. He'll get the kill. CCNC held by the Ice Blast. But very, very tanky. Has the bow. We'll throw it out. The BKB activated and snaking. Going to control up Mars to make sure he can't get a good arena of blood. They'll drag him back into a torrent. Watching him up in the air. Light Strike Array as well. It's enough with the adaptive strike to kill him off. Buyback comes in from AA. Not really sure what you're hoping to achieve though. They think out snaking. Problem is he's a little bit too fast to escape. Although if they hit this, the Searing Chains. Sun Strike. Almost snaking. Oh, the Creepers can't quite get him. He has enough regen to just get out of there. The tornado off the mark. Oh, X. Perfectly timed to drag Yawar into that tornado alongside Kunkka, but hey, that was long range. Hey, might have his ulti very soon too. Yeah, but Ember, Ember, oh no! That detail might have been going through their mind, Liz, but now there's a giant spike of water going through Ember's brains. As he gets splashed down by Yawar. And it looks a bit like Vichy maybe baited themselves there. Forward gaming is just completely dominating right now, and that's it as they manage to survive that early game aggression on the back of Pylai Dai just healing up their towers time after time. Uh, they didn't even they didn't even lose mid or top tier one, only the bottom one. And I believe these zero scale much much better. Oh, well, these itemization choices, yes. Uh, you just look at Vici. You know when we said that all in on the magic damage. Ember is going for radiance this whole time. Yeah, he's trying to get that radiance for a really long time and. 
I mean, it does help him out with a slight of fist as well. It's not that bad. Uh, Invoker has his BKB too. They, they can definitely fight, but they're in a really hard position to do so at the moment. I'm thinking now how that Ags really screws the pooch for them as well. We said a lack of physical damage could be very damning for Vici and with that disarm. Arena. Noble pass, big in the Snake King. There's the Sun Strike for the combo of the Arena. They'll get the kill. The boat's coming through. Mars is protected by his ultimate, though, so CCNC will just back away. Yeah, you can't really go on CCNC. He has that BKB available, so very difficult kill to make. There's a Meteor Hammer coming up on Pile I Die, too. He's going to have it in, what, uh, 700 gold? This is actually really scary with MSS, right? Because you, you've probably experienced this in your, your high-level pop games, is the uh, team kind of memefully is the Yule's Meaty Hammer A for Lens for Lena's, right? Because you can just chain stun for a never-ending amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Trian's Protector alone can keep you rooted for, like, ever with the Meteor Hammer. Stunned, rooted, stunned, rooted. It's very bad. Yeah, when he gets 20 as well with the Nature Sky's root talent. Overgrowth too, just helps you out. There's just kind of that synchronicity allows the supports alone to go ganking together and find kills on almost anyone on the side of Vici. If Radiant you don't have a BKB, you, you're an easy kill for forward gaming. That's pretty much all there is to it. Yeah, and um, only one of them has a BKB. Ember is building into the Agonims, trying to go for it at least. It's very, very far away from it, but... It's optimistic. You can dream. You can dream. The dreaming of taking down tier 1 tar, because yeah. it's not going to be reality, not with Pylite Dai still alive. When it comes to new Aghanims, we didn't talk about snaking and his. He finished off his zone. As you can see, when you use Shield Clash, it goes in 90 degrees around you everywhere. Swashbuckle, that is. So. Yeah, the arms can be pretty pesky here. Like we said before, you know, they don't really have much physical damage and that can ruin, ruin and remove the little they do. BY, this is just kind of rinse and repeat by now. At least he got his ice blast out before he died. Mars is lingering around. Yang guess is wrong. Oh no, he committed the arena as well. The Cataclysm on top of it. And he won't even be able to TP away. Mistakes have been made as Yuwa gets the double kill. So uh, he didn't do that for no reason. There, He went for that play because he was hoping to jump on Yavar. Yavar, yeah. Yavar as he was hitting Ancient Apparition and killing him, Ancient Apparition managed to use the Frost Blast on him. So if you clip that Morphling with anything as he has no BKB, uh, the Cataclysm is going to finish him off. Sadly for him, he didn't manage to catch him in the arena. Sorry. So it's BKB, they won't try and force it out of them. But with Fade nearby, they don't press too hard. And Ford Gaming now up to an 8k net worth lead, just down to 7. Roach will spawn in one and a half minutes, so... In about 30 seconds time, when you've got all the heroes of Ichi up and you've got all your abilities, even team finding a pickoff could be critical to securing around that rose pit and looking to just take an easy Aegis. Vici, they might be able to fight around Roche. Uh, as long as they manage to bait out the BKBs and play around them, you need to somehow prolong this fight long enough for the BKBs to end, and then you have to re-engage. It's, it's very hard for them to do so, but you have mobile heroes as well. You have that Ember Spirit. You can bait out spells and then run out. I think that has to be their game plan. Also, Invoker has a BKB, so he can do something similar too. Yeah, like, yeah. Just clashing heads with them 5-on-5 five five is not going to work for Vichy Gaming any longer. Yavar is going to, to have that BKB very soon too, as 2.8k gold. And you mentioned it earlier, once that's the case, really, that there's not any easy way to lock down Vichy. You can uh, lock down your while. Mm, you, have you, to, you can potentially chain stun him. Uh, there's there's a Hex being picked up by Invoker soon too, so that's one of the ways. But he's not there yet, he only has 1.4k gold. And they smoked. The move around the back towards this tier 1, which is still standing 31 minutes in the game. Go yeah. see the terrain. And look at this. This is so hard to do because that tier 1 that you just mentioned is still stay, is staying there. If you if you smoke up and there's no tier 1, at least maybe you can rush up to this shrine uphill. But even that's dangerous. And it was obvious it, now to Ford as well because there was a ward placed by Vici and they had a sentry down already. But th uh, this way it's not even an option for you. You can't even think about that mm -hmm. as the tier 1 is still there. And it's the power of this Treant Protector, who is about to finish his Meteor Hammer that we mentioned earlier. He has it, he has enough gold to buy the staff at least. Does indeed. Meanwhile, MSS, he's going for an Aghanim Scepter next. So we're going to have an Aghanim Stone MSS, Aghanim Stone Snake King. 
Tree the game of Ags at this rate. I mean, Ice Frog, he added 20, how many? 7, 8? It's either 20, 24, 26, or 28. I can't remember right. which. But it was in the 20s. He did it for a reason. That's my point. He added all these agonims for a reason. He yeah. wants people to buy them. And then, of course, you can eventually just upgrade them and get them out of your inventory altogether. It's beautiful. Now, now I'm just waiting for particle effects like you put on one on every single uh, Aghanims. You remember I, Les Rack when he would buy Aghanims, some spikes would, would pop out from him. Really? Yeah, like he would get spikes around him. Nyx Assassin would get him too. It would change him a bit. I'm pretty sure like, this is just beginning of the experiment, right? What will happen is eventually every item you'll be able to buy a recipe upgrade for it to just make it passive. Hmm. That's... An interesting thought, actually. Good. It's power. It's power spikes, right? Like, like as a game comes out and then it's around for longer and longer, and you choose new heroes. Those new heroes, in theory, will be OP compared to the new, uh, the oldest ones. That's how it usually works. So you're gonna have it's a power creep, is what it's called. Yeah. And Dora has been around for many years. Basically, you want to make heroes that delay the game and go for 120 seconds the strongest heroes in the game, right? Well, it's because when just, we introduce new heroes, just we... Pick, just pick our Forden and Tech. Yeah, That's... Uh-oh. He's in trouble with my tech right there. They'll draw through the wrong button. And the poke follow-up's enough to bring him down. You want to get the kill. Snake King, gonna pursue looking for more. Paparazzi's been seen. X there, pulls out the BKB, and now the movement in is down. The Ice Blast through, doing enough damage to bring down Snaking. Turn around, next on the hit list, Kuka will fall. Down for 90 seconds, Mars commits the arena to find back in. And because of that, they'll find the kill under Yawa as well. Beautifully done by Vici, using the high ground against Ford Gaming, who you'd think would have the advantage. Just perfect ex execution from them. Somehow they did it. Everything that I theorized about, they, they managed to do it properly. Like, so many teams would just fail at that, but they, they forced that Kuka to use the to use the BKB early enough, they kite him, and then they go on him afterwards. And Morphling, he was stunlocked. He didn't even have a chance to use that BKB. He just died without it. Nah, no. died on 1300 HP as well. Uh, that buyback from Mars was the critical part at the end, because if you don't have that control, there's an argument that Morphling just rolls over the rest of your team. It sounds insane to say, but... We've mentioned it earlier, if you don't actually stun him at the start, and he gets BKB off, you don't actually have the means to really kill Morphling without a perfect Ice Blast. Mm -hmm. Right now, they do have Aegis, they have Cheese to work with too, and they're in a much better spot than they were just a minute ago. It looked like a completely forward game. They're still 3k ahead, that's definitely true, but Vichy Gaming, they're not out of it. Oh, this is where longer. Network changes hands very fast, because once you start to give up fights like this, the train isn't there to keep your, your towers alive, you haven't got a team to defend them. Well, to play Ember, they do have Agonims. They'll move in, Paparazzi, rooted up, throws out a Remnant, you have to buy some time, Mars is coming in, they need to retreat. He actually Remnant's full, he's looking for the kill, Life Terrain gets dodged out, and now MSS, there's a Yules on him. We're gonna be in another oh, spin up in the air with a tornado. Sunstrike as well, but MSS can't even throw out a stun, he's dead. And while that was happening, they actually picked off Mars in the top, the perfect pick off of Ford, in fact. As he bought back last fight. Mm, that's a really good pick off. Much more important than killing that Lina, I believe, as well. As you just stated, he bought back, so there won't be any Mars for a minute. Pi needs to get out of here now. He, he's done his part. He's he hasn't really even picked up the rune, though. He, he sees it. He knows it's there. He, he, is this the moment where you're like, they're baiting me? They're definitely baiting me. There's no reason they wouldn't have picked that up. I think you still go for the bounty if you are Pi, even if you know that you're going to die afterwards. Come on, Pi. I think you just go for it. You're plus five. Do your duty. CC and C. Why is CC and C doing your duty? Yeah. Because he wants to kill the DUI, that's why. Torrent. And do it. And he's dead. Cold feet will kill him off, but... He, he just didn't want to give it away that he's there, that's the thing. So that CC and C can come in and then they can get the kill on AA. That's pretty much the reason. Would you have just grabbed that rune straight away? Of course I would. You're a plus five. You, yeah, you see it. that rune, you take it. It's a bounty rune. Let's go. I, like... I had one qualifier with Bulldog screaming at me, runes, I'm done. That, that's all I needed. I don't need that anymore. Yeah, I'm surprised Bulldog hasn't set up a training camp. You just have your... Uh, training camp you, for runes. Yeah, you just have your trainees. They sleep at night with headsets on with uh, you saying tower. runes. On I, repeat. I heard he has a uh, like a watch that's set up to ring every five minutes, just to an alarm set up every five minutes. Does he just panically wake up, scream runes, and then yeah. fall back to sleep? I wish I could fall back to sleep that easily. Uh, one person has been able to slumber for a long time in this game, though, is DY. 13 deaths now in this ancient apparition, making up almost half Radiant of the kill score for gaming. Fortified. 
It's a hard game for A. There are so many ways to get on top of him, so... Even if you position yourself so far back, it's... It's, it's very easy to die, so... He's got hit. Oh, paparazzi arrives. Snake King gets calmed out. Sun Strike right there. Life Strike right to cover. BKB mistaken. The Laguna as well. And again, pretty low. And they'll kill off the Aegis so quickly. Now they're going to chase through. You are with the BKB. Chase on the ancient apparition. We said he dies a lot. Is he going to die again? The Glimmer Cape takes him for a moment. But now he throws out the Ice Blast pretty early. You are BKB. He's about to run out as he moves away. Aegis has been ticked out. So Ember now back up, ready to fight the arena off the mark. They are looking for Pylite die. They do see him. He's got the overgrowth to work with, but his team aren't looking to re-engage. Good look on the side. Paparazzi the BKB chasing in, looking on a snake king. Gonna get him low. Remnants across and gets the kill. We'll be able to get away. Courtesy of this pesky five remnant agonims. Man, the Morphling just out of mana. Had to go back. Couldn't really continue fighting there. So they do take down that Aegis, but at what cost? They lose the Pylite die and snake king. Snake king gives away 900 gold to Ember. And now Tornado. CCT is found. Hexed up, EMP, no man to work with, can't protect himself the boat, Life Strike Ray is good, Laguna as well, turn it around, trying to kill Paparazzi, he's going to use up by time though. Yeah, he was a little bit greedy there, didn't want to use his BKB, I wonder if he used it, maybe he could have went on the Ember Spirit to finish him off. I don't think he thought they had the damage, he maybe forgot that this is Alina with an Aghanims. Exactly. And a spell amplification o talent. Overall, Vichy Gaming is just playing a little bit faster across the map. Very decisive with their movements and the way they... Th that's the power of Aegis as well. They forced Snake King to use his BKB to get the Ember down first time, but the second time the BKB is gone and then you have to run. That's the thing. If uh, if Witchy ga Gaming realized, which they did, that they have to play around these BKBs and bait them out somehow, which they did, it's much easier for them to win these fights. Absolutely. Paparazzi he's loving life with this axe right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, he got the Remnant cooldown talent as well, so it's spam galore. Radiant Remember that talent. these Remnants, because of the Ags, cost no mana now. This was one of the big problems as to why Embers couldn't really take that talent at level 25. Radiant Look at this. Being greedy, yours. Roll Thunder, towards the BKB, you're going to be used, MSS in trouble, will go down, Paparazzi going to pursue further, with the Magic Minion still on it. We're out of Highlight Dive, force him to re return. And now, they're gonna swash buckle up. Paparazzi throws out the remnants, wants to kill the pilot. I'm moving in right now, we'll be able to move back. Just in time. Buy back from MSS. Now MSS needs to find some value out of this, but Yang, he'll be the last one to move away. Vichy look to retreat, and they should get away with this. Meanwhile, you are just, just to pick up some bounty runes. Yeah, just stealing bounty runes on the right side. There are two more bounty runes on that top lane. Oh, they know about yeah. okay, he's afraid. Of, he's afraid of going there instantly. Yeah, he got back to base in time because Vici, once they retreat like that, you know there's a reason behind it. And it's not just runes. There's got to be more value for them there. Really solid play by Vici Gaming overall. Uh, that hex, as soon as it came online for Ori, he made so much work out of it. Also, Yang now has that BKB to work with, which is going to make it much harder for forward gaming to take it down. Does indeed. And also, you mentioned that hex. Before too long, I'm sure they'll have another one online because Fade has it queued up. And we do see this quite often from Cottles. They get enough gold that they can justify going for such an expensive and lucrative item. He already does so much. With that Agonist with level 25, he has plus 200 to illuminate uh, damage. It seems like right now, Ford need to buy a little bit of time because 23, 23, 24. They're lacking behind on these very po very powerful level 25 talents. It's not exactly. It's about the levels, but look at this. There's smoke. smoke. Snake King's going to see first. Going to move in right now. He couldn't even use the Royal Thunder. Now they'll just move across and clean him up. Dead for 80 seconds. Remnants moving so fast, along with Paparazzi on top of CCNC. Light Strike Array will zone him away. Overgrowth and Pilot die. The pings come out, and now... It looks like they're going to rub more fling. The boat's been thrown out. The BKB, CCNC moving in looking for a kill, but the fourth up gets AA away. DY refusing to die anymore. Ice Blast goes through. Yuan now needs to retreat away from this. BKBs are active on both sides. One's going to run out soon for Snaking. He needs to be careful to look to escape. We'll get the wrong finder off in time. The arena goes down. Yang is looking beautiful. The Hex coming out onto CCNC. Going to control them up with Ignis as well. They can't get out quick enough. Buyback's going to be them cooking. Trying to TP out, but the damage is already being done. The Laguna turn around. Beautifully done to get the kill to Mars. A very critical component will force Vici away as they did lose. Keep it alive as well. Hey, hey. Oh, no. no, he gets out. I, I, you know, I got give it a DI. In the last several minutes, he has oh, not sticky. died anymore. But they're looking to re engage again. Hex comes out. Oh, can drag someone back to the X. And the perfect pickoff is already down for 100 seconds. And no matter what Paparazzi does, they've reached the phase where Ford just says, ignore him, kill everyone else.
It, it didn't look that great at the start of that fight as they did take down Snake King and they forced CCNC to buy back too. So when you think about this forward gaming, they didn't come out completely on top of that fight. They didn't earn way too much uh, unless they forced some buybacks. They're still in a good spot, but they did have to buy back both the CCNC and the Pango. At least the rush response, but and they yeah, are lucky. Seconds. They are lucky. That's a very very fast rush. You can easily force the Invoker buyback once Vici realizes what is going on because there's no way they can fight in that pit without the assistance of Ori. CCC, he just needs to stay in the pit for a while longer. And the respawn is there, they will they will see it instantly into the pit. Now this is great for them. That's Roshan also has a refresher shard. MSS. <laughs> We're gonna move away here. Snake King is here as well. PKB from Paparazzi moving on for MSS. Eyes blast off the mark. They're healing him up. Now Paparazzi just needs to retreat. And now he doesn't have a BKB. So even if you buy back on the Invoker, your Ember can't go deep. Now that BKB also was used and it's now on five seconds uh, on Ember Spirit. So it's not really strong as much as before anymore. Without Ice Blast, without that BKB, there was no way they were going to contest Roche when it became obvious what was going on. Iwan now has an Aegis in his possession. Uh, it really looked to me like Forward Gaming missed their spike. They they had a huge power spike once they got the Antagonims. And uh, once they got the BKB on, on Morphling, sorry, and on Kunkka. But uh, Vichy Gaming, they managed to just bait them to use those BKBs. They, they just played around the BKB so well that they won a couple of teamfights. And it looked to me like Forward Gaming had no way back in, but Vichy Gaming take that one crucial fight around the shrine. They get baited in by the fact that they killed Snake King. He buybacks, comes back in, and suddenly the rush responds, unfortunately for them, very fast. And they are playing versus uh, Cheese, Aegis, and Refresher now. Die. Die, die, die. Into the trees that he loves so much. And we'll be around for him killed off. Dead for 55 seconds. Random four paparazzi. Snake hunt King. For more. Snake King. Into a tree away from this force. Uses BKB. Has that refresher shard though, so yes, he has no refresher, problem. but he has to be careful. Oh, X out on the fade, fourth up away, they'll be a dragon down with the yield to buy some time. Now moving in Paparazzi getting pretty low here from the light strike right, have to BKB and retreat. The arena committed by Yang, barely clipping on MSS, but we'll do it nonetheless. Light strike right, forces out the BKB, and now just TP out the boats to cover the escape. Instead, they're going to force Yang to just try and escape this, and the BKB still running, he can TP away. Meanwhile, there is going to be a pursuit coming out from Snaking. Couldn't connect with anyone though, and he did commit the refresher shot. Yeah, he committed two BKBs and the shard, so he needs to go back. Didn't really manage to do a whole lot with his ultimate there, but if he didn't use it that early on, he would have most certainly died. His BKBs are burning up on both sides pretty rapidly. The yeah, two most highlightable ones still are in the Invoker and the Morphling. Both sitting still at 8 seconds. And there's Mars too with, with one that's 8 seconds, but it's not as relevant as these two. No, he just walked in. If he gets his old combo, he feels good. Ori. He is in trouble here. He's gonna get back to him as well. He's gonna chase through. He's dead! Instantly disappears. That BKB does not really matter if you don't use it. An unusual mistake coming out from Ori. He was so far out. He did not expect him to be there, that's all. Hi. He literally just placed that ward. That's a painful experience. But it's, it's one of those wards nice. that you place versus uh, Treant Protector, so he pre preemptively placed his own. Now they're trying to force the side of Ford back. The problem is Ford push much faster and hit buildings much harder than the side of Ichi. So I'm not sure that plan is going to work. And of course, the train can help out without even being there. They already forced the Morphling away, so because of that, they aren't going to lose the tier 3 on the top lane. None of the tier 3s have fallen on, the, on either side. So. Aparazzi, can be hit off by the boat with the X. Just dodges one out, the X will drag him back though, and he'll throw out another remnant to escape. Snaking did use the Royal Thunder, doesn't even have mana to pursue easily. The speed of those remnants is, is just it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, you can't catch him. It, it's so difficult to kill the Ember. Well, there have been a lot of theories about how ridiculous the Ember Axe would be if we got to see it, and finally we are seeing it, and it's insane, right? Because one of the big kind of counterpoints with Ember for most of the game is how he has to budget around his remnants. And that's how that slow way. they are if you properly catch him, if you slow him down, right? But none of that matters any longer. And late game, Ember is a force to be reckoned with, not because of what you think, you know, Battle Furies and Daedalus is instead as much of a nuisance to lock down and kill as a puck. 
maybe slightly lower on the categories, but you can see why. Like, the amount of time you spend is definitely He's definitely up here. Like, look at that recharge rate. Just look at it go. What is that, 10 seconds? It's really fast. Because he's got the Octarine as well. Charge restore time, 13 seconds. 13 seconds. Ball lane. Yang forced to use the BKB and TP away. It's long enough, but... The only big charges. Yeah. Pilot like that if he clipped him there, he, he stops him, but... Yeah. They're buying time, though. They're just trying to weigh out this Aegis. There's an Abyssal Blade completed on Pangolier. I believe Morphing has his full Scuddy completed. No buyback on him. I, he does have that Aegis, but no yeah, buyback. Yeah, Aegis hasn't got long left either, though. Mm. It's very difficult to take him down twice. They have 30 seconds to get the fight. And, uh, this smoke, it might be a little bit too late to do this. Ember. It's looking desperate. Mm. Paparazzi, not the ideal target. Almost 3,000 HP on this Ember Spirit. They have to know that this Aegis is running out. Oh, but yay, he commits the loot. They no. need to wait for it now. 30 seconds. They have to be on the sidelines, on the side of Feature Gaming. You yeah. can't just... You, you can't go and fight them without that ult. So Ford will just linger around in this triangle belonging to the side of Vici. And Vici will just stay in their primary jungle, unlikely to try and assault towards the other side Aegis of the map, but if Ford are. Aegis has been reclaimed just now. And you definitely know that if you're forward. They're trying to... You're Vici. They're just trying to very casually get rid of this tier 2 tower in the mid, make sure all of Vici's base is exposed. He's still standing, but barely. MSS. It's a lot of gold on this Lina, and uh, it's the pickoff potential of this boss four, right? With that Ags, with that Laguna. Also, with the attack range increase. There's pickoff potential, but you won't split up if you are Vichy Gaming. It happened once that Tori made that mistake, that crucial mistake on the top lane when he died, but it's not going to happen again for sure. I believe there's a smoke coming up for them. They are going to try a five-man rotation towards that bottom lane. Uh, so you have to, like, 15 minutes in, you have to be doing this. And especially when you're playing versus 3 and Protector, you have to be playing in such a compact way. But look at Snake in. He's guarding. They're expecting this. They might see MSS first, but Snake King's the one you have to worry about. And there you go, Remnant's in. Snake King ready with their own fun to get going. He's going to zone the rest of the way. The Hex is going to come out. Laguna as well. Laguna the Ember going to get rid of Paparazzi gone. Dead for 100 seconds. They need to get everyone else out. Full game split up and look for clues. DY hiding in the tree line. The buyback comes out. Remember, the pins are there. The catch clear as well. Look at the Morphling, but he went full strength. They need to get through quicker than this. They drop down the English. The DKB's actually gone. Snake King is going to run out now. They get the kill of the Morphling finally. Is he going to get back and involved in this fight? It doesn't look like he wants to. He's got the buyback, but he doesn't want to commit. He says, wait, if everyone else gets out, Ember just made a big investment. Looks like everyone might get out. Snake King still retreating with the swashbuckles. The bash, luckily for him, goes on to the Ember. He has Rolling Thunder in one second. He doesn't need it. He'll be able to use it in time. He's actually turned around. He's looking for kills now. He's a little bit greedy, but he might be able to get away with it. He forces a TP. And gets himself out. He TP'd. Yeah, he TP'd away. Fade couldn't be killed there as he had the big fat heal from the Illuminate. Yep. Always the pesky part of this keep it all light. That, that's really well played by forward. If they manage to hold their base and uh, stay them off as long as Morphling is dead, just don't die, don't do anything rash. Wait for 15 more seconds. NSS. He, he does notice, here. Yeah, he notices the ghost walk. Then he that should out. alert Pylite die to the incoming problem, but he's a little bit slow off the mark. He won't be able to get out. Instead, here we catch TF War. We run him through. Yeah, that's, into the tree. that's a big kill because he has no buyback. 100 seconds on the sidelines, even when the Smorfling is respawned, they don't have that 3 end to work with. Did he have Blink Dagger available as well, or was it just on cooldown? Yeah, he just got caught there, it happens. So they have to wait for him now. I don't believe they will even try to fight around this tier 2 on the top lane, as they don't have the Morphling or the 3 end. North is at least up in 10 seconds, and it looks like Ford are going to prioritize keeping the other lane pushed down. So that's not a variable they have to be concerned with. Another big item pickup that we haven't mentioned is the Kunkas Hex. That definitely does help out versus the Ember. One of the reasons why he did die in that last engagement was that exact Hex. Um, also, I just love the way Snaking just zoned them out after jumping off from that clip. He didn't hit anyone with his uh, Rolling Thunder, but it was good enough to zone them at least. Speaking of Snaking, just forced to use his BKB here. He missed TP away. Just, oh no, 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 he mistimed it though! It didn't last long enough, the Hex, and he's dead. 120 seconds, and he's 75 gold short of buyback. That was such a 
great mistake. He could have even used the Rolling Thunder. It's only 35 seconds on cooldown. There was nothing stopping him from using that into a TP. Instead, he uses that 5 second BKB. This time the port gets caught. Very unfortunate as there is a huge opportunity for Vici Gaming to just go into the pit right now if they realize that Roshan is up. And that Roshan gives you an Agnus too. So one of these heroes is going to be very happy with it. I guess you could give it to... Hmm. Well, AA is about to have enough for his own one, but everyone's already eyeing up that. So, I mean, look at this, Mars wants one. Mars or... Yeah, it's just Mars, right? It's just Mars and AA. It's yeah. going to be full team mags one way or the other. Let's see who gets it. I believe they'll give it to Mars. It's AA needs a bit of gold more. Just 500 more to, to get it. But then again, you want AA to have five back in case he doesn't get a chance to use his ultimate. They will consume it on Yang, though. Yeah, Mars gets it. And also, that Paparazzi's ready to get a consumed Ag soon as well. The thing is, uh, you can get something that's going to make more impact on Yang, right? And then DY, DY like, he can't get anything better than Agonus, at the moment at least. So. Yes, indeed. And with all that, Vichy now pushes towards the base. You all just wave one way the creep wave and be dragged back by his Kunkka. There's a shard on Invoker too, so he's going to be doing a whole lot in this next fight. Long range stuns just to annoy Mars a little bit and force the attention of the Vichy supports up to top. They're just trying to buy time because Snaking is up in 20 seconds, so Vichy, they got a long time to wait. They can buy some time, they can wait around. They only just picked up this Aegis, there's no rush. Maybe you just use this as an opportunity to make sure Ember still will have buyback next time you do fight, considering he's the only one in the game who has on cooldown. You could definitely do that. You could chill a little bit, but considering Paparazzi just bought a BKB and the consumable uh, Agonim Scepter, I mean, bought a consumable Agonim Scepter, which is going to allow him to have that BKB in the inventory. Expect them to look to fight. To move out now. I don't think they're going to wait, indeed. No. But looking to see if there's actually anything that Ford have available to them. It doesn't look like Yawar can pick up a Nags anytime soon because his buyback is so damn expensive. CCNC heading for a refresher next. Long way off. Train wants a refresher and that's even further off. Maybe MSS with a four star, but he still needs about a thousand gold to actually feel comfortable to have that and have a buyback. Four staffs can make a big difference. We've seen the kind of plays that can define games of the Definitely. back of four staffs. Four, four staffs, these small little items just change the game completely. Forces, utility, small utility items are very important. Forces, glimmer capes, load swords, they can change the dynamic of a fight completely. TCNC, thought about pushing down the wave. Realized that Invoker was here and that was just a fourth scout pie, so he should just look to TP out here. That's Vici trying to just get control of all the lanes so they're pushing on all sides and pressuring forward. Maybe see if they slip up and make a small error that can be exploited. Snaking, he's under vision. He'll deward them. They're moving across right now. He needs to retreat. Swash buckle on cooldown for There's two more seconds. The Hex is going to come out as well. Snake King in trouble. They commit the arena. They're going to pin him in place. Can they do enough here? Yes, they can. He doesn't get the BKB out. Too many Hexes here. Cataclysm covers them. And now you want the BKB. He has to retreat. The boats are coming in, but they can't do anything with it. Yeah, the fleet was there, but hope oh, no. BKB from MSS. CCNC still holding on his BKB. Throws it out. Ice Blast gets committed. Buyback comes out from Snake King. Vici just forcing that without really committing too heavily. Yes, they have to throw down the Keep of the Light ultimate, but they didn't have to put anyone at risk. And now, Pi. Paladine wants to get a good overgrowth file here. He went for that divorce because he saw them around the bottom lane, right? Uh, around the bottom creeps as they were uh, hunting MSS and Kunkka. But this lineup is so fast, they are so that. fast. So much mobility across the five of them. Ember and the Walker and Ghostwalk, they just get from one side of the map to the other in a matter of seconds. And it's not like this is a mystery surprise to Snake King. He knows this. We've seen this through and through from Paparazzi especially. And Invoker infamous with running across the map at max speed. Arena coming out. Hex goes out to Mars. They're pulling a full up all click. Pretty low in. The first straight for him. He's gone. Now the boat's going to fall through. The buyback comes out from Morgan straight away. Can't hesitate. The roots are going to be there from the overgrowth. The control is looking good. They're going to get Ember low. They can't even pop that eggs and move away. Or his BKB's running out. So Beachy, they say that's a big commitment of the buyback. That's good for us. Calm down, reset, heal up, and then come again. 
That's exactly what they'll do, because MSS is dead for 110 seconds, and he is just shy of buyback, because he bought out on the fourth stuff. It's all about the morphing and snaking right now. If you manage to take down one of them, this game is pretty much over for Forward Gaming as they just and use their buybacks. They have the Ice Blast again. This is where they're likely to pounce because Arena Blood is off cooldown as well. Ice Blast. moving in. Ice Blast and that Dagonyms on the AA can take down Morphling very easily if he doesn't have BKB. You are just turning into Ember Spirit, just trying to B-push this. And speaking of Embers, just a bit more scout from Paparazzi. He's having the time of his life with so many remnants. Exodor, he can't be up to now in 14 seconds, they want to strike, it has to be now, and instead they're going to strike Drake on the ball, but no, the fourth stop game out of the way, this is he's gone, he's dead, that's going to be a dieback, and now, can they even hold without the damage, I'm not so sure, snaking with the BKB, chasing through, gets Ori off the high ground, but what do you do about the rest of the heroes, Ignis gets committed, Hex as well, they're going to push him deeper, hit him against his own towers, Overgrowth looks good, but waves with damage to follow up, Death and Blast comes out for Ori, the BKB active, they'll turn and find a kill, on the snaking, but no, he managed to heal up, but geez, Hex up, pinned against the same tower again trying to force stuff him away keep him alive light strike array is good and stay king is gonna live but barely or he did die in the meantime forces the buyback and highlight dies stands to media hammer can't do anything with it though now the buyback comes out the maguna looking good mars low but the hex is gonna be on mss chase of forward hex return on the evoker we determine a little bit wrong funder came off cooldown again stay king we're gonna lock them up and in place the boat follow through but ori he's an x long enough here he's gonna be dragged back in a moment but they need to be careful kunka just had to retreat the shadow blade so in the end ori dodges every single bow. The buyback comes not, out from Coddle. They do not want to in. Arena, off cool dead again. Now the spear as well, Snakey. They try to force stuff him out of the way, but Orbit is too late. He's too low. He's dead. 120 seconds dead. No buyback left for him. And now the Hex going to be there on the Paparazzi. Too tanky for them right now, though. They need another minute before the morphing is up. The good news is they bought a lot of time. They still have two lanes to work with. Moving in. Nice pin coming out. X will drag Yang back, though. The media hammer to try and cover because they're going aggressive with Ember. It's going to stun them up. And now Kunka has to buy back. He still went down, so they didn't have a turnaround opportunity. Overgrowth is going to come out on the two. Now the boat's going to follow through the Hex. They're going to force up even deeper. Kunka trying to sidestep this all and be ready with the BKB. He's going to activate it, but he needs to retreat. Hex comes out. Life Strike Ray is going to be there. Laguna is available. They're going to shotgun down. But Yang so tanky and so live. Oh, is he? The final hit coming through. Nice cleave. Just in time with a Ryuk to keep himself alive and up. And it looks like Ford are running out of things to throw at this. Gonna have the Laguna again in 40 seconds. They might have one more shot of this because they've got one lane left and they've got a morphling up in 10 seconds. The problem is you haven't dealt with this AA threat. This fight has lasted more than 120 seconds as that morphling did die without the buyback. And he's now respawned again. He's he's ready to join the fight and maybe, just maybe, they can fight them off away from this do or die. Torrent is probably timed. Light Striker A doesn't connect. They force the BKB out of Yang. He'll retreat, but the boat has now been committed. You'll get the boat fast, but you don't get the boat stunts. You are. Mid Head start. They pop this Lincoln. They're going to move in now. The Ice Blast on point, and now he's in trouble. You are again. dead. He only just got back up, but now he's watching from the sideline again. The Hex is out. You're holding him up in the air with the tornado. Coming down, CCNC is gone, and That's GG is cool. As VG realized, they are dominant here. Paparazzi will celebrate by refreshing some shards so he can just pally around in the fountain, but my god, Ember Spirit Agonims is out of this world.